Happy Tuesday, everybody. Man, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like that video. It's a little catchy. I, I'm sure it's going to get old after uh, a couple of weeks of doing it. So I'll have belt work on a couple, but it's kind of exciting. It gets me going. But welcome. Uh, we got Trevor Steele here today on this Tuesday, beautiful Tuesday day. And uh, we're excited to talk to him about family, business, life, and whatever else we get going with here. So Trevor, welcome. Awesome, man. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are, where you're at, and we'll get started. So I'm, uh, which hand, which hand? Uh, I'm this guy, <laughs> Trevor Steele. Um, I've been married since 2007 to my middle school sweetheart, um, luckiest man alive. I have three beautiful children, two daughters and a son. My son is eight years old. My oldest daughter is 13. So that gives you the, uh, the ages. And, um, me and my wife have been building businesses together since day one. And it has been a long, long road for, uh, mostly for her, but, um, it's been a long road for both of us. She, uh, she likens being married to an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, like, uh, being in an airplane and having, uh, being tied to the person that jumps out of the airplane. So, I guess that's me. I'm the guy jumping out of the airplane and she's tied to me. So <laughs> that's a lot of trust. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's kind of no option, right? You know, she's, <laughs> she's got a rope around her ankle and she gets ripped out of the airplane too. So, but uh, yeah, that's me. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, I love it. I love how long you guys have been together and uh, three beautiful kids. I've got the mix of 10 to 13. So I know, uh, I know the love and the, the pains that you go through right now. And it's, it's exciting. I wouldn't give it up for anything. For sure. So I love, I love the branding you got going on there, man. The, the clean image deal. Uh, you got something else in the background, the clean image. So you do really incredible work with all your branding. Thank you, man. So, all right, well, let's get started. Um, I don't even know where you want to start with you. I mean, I, I love the entrepreneur and spouse thing. Uh, I want to get talking about that a little bit later because it's not an easy balance for a lot of uh, couples and spouses to do that. And you guys seem to have it down pretty well. And it just, um, it elevates each other and it just gets you both going and, and pushes you to the next direction. So we'll talk about that, but let's talk about business and networking and, you know, let's just be transparent and honest when, uh, I saw you at Clipicon in Vegas, mm -hmm. and we hung out for just a, a short while out there, and then saw you again four or five days later in South Carolina. Got to hang out with you a little more there, and you know, one night I came up to you and I said, "I don't know if I even like you," <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and um, I, I, I knew there was something there, and I, I wanted to, to figure out what it was. And then we sat down, and I mean, it's been all uphill since then, since we had the conversation and, you know, I had a, an assumption that was wrong and you had a great conversation with me, but then we were able to network and communicate and talk effectively. And now we're here doing the live together. So I appreciate you um, listening to me and not just punching me for being an asshole that night. Um, but let's talk about networking because I really think it's important. And I'm really working on that more and more every year as I, um, grow through the stages of my own company. So how important do you think networking is when you start up your business? All right. So that is a very large question. Um, there's a book written by Damon John called the power of broke. Um, I've, I've started and failed multiple businesses, but I continue to fail forward. Right. So I've been doing, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 something years. Um, I guess I'm older than I look. Maybe not. I don't know the beard it kind of helps <laughs> me look older, but um, the whole concept of it is to build your business from the grassroots uh, standpoint to structure your business as if you didn't have any money. Even if you do the odds of you being a successful business owner 
when you start with very little and you have to earn it and build it or uh, go up dramatically for success. So um, the whole concept is networking is the easiest, cheapest route. Okay, maybe not easiest, but cheapest route. So for networking, if you were going to start a business tomorrow, I would say don't invest all your money in equipment. Don't spend a whole bunch of money on marketing. Don't spend a whole bunch of money on stuff that you don't really need. Networking is the groundwork. Um, It's the most important part of the beginning stages of any business, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I I love that. And I failed at that horribly in the beginning. And as I progressed through my entrepreneurial journey, I found how important, how crucial it was. And not even with just local people and other industries, but Mm. to network with the same people or the people in the same industry. And now anytime I see somebody new in the area, I try and find their number and give them a call and just say, hey, my name is JC with KP or Pro Wash or Patriot Elimination, whichever it is. Uh, I just want to let you, you know, welcome you to the area. If there's anything you ever need, just let me know. We're here for you because I'd rather have a partnership with somebody because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, one, they may have a job that they can't handle and they, they might need our resources. Two, we might be so busy that instead of just saying, no, we can't help you, we'd rather refer them to another company in the area. And three, you just never know who they know, first of all. Uh, which is just great to be able to communicate effectively with everybody. And then you get, get together and you can talk business, talk shop, talk about whatever it is, but it's better to network with your local quote unquote competitors, which I hate using that word and uh, build a good relationship. So you work together instead of against each other. Right. Yeah. So that's a whole nother side of networking. And I think that's probably what your question was leading to. And I misunderstood. It was both sides. No, uh, yeah. I was just talking about that one, but yeah. Yeah. So that's, there was a, a, major shift in in uh, my business and it really occurred and it's probably the reason you couldn't read me when you first met me um my mindset in business has always been um hard knocks hard lessons i'm gonna keep all this to myself i'm not sharing anything with anybody i don't want my competitor knowing my pricing or my structure or my systems and i'm not telling anybody anything right Cause I'm the man that was my mindset. And I didn't want anybody to know what I know. Who God had plans for me, buddy. He buried me, <laughs> buried me over and over and over again until I finally woke up. And it was guys like you and Pat Clark. And um, man, I don't want to leave names out, but guys that really opened my eyes to make me realize that, you know, there's way more to, to business than just trying to bootstrap it. And uh, when I started opening my eyes and, and, networking with other business owners that's really when everything changed for me which is so it's interesting you bring that up yeah now i'm firm believer that same thing same concept same everything and for us i mean we have an open door policy if you want to see our numbers come in our office i I don't care it's not i mean you can try and compete with us but good luck i mean we we do a lot of things good but i'm not afraid for people to see that afraid for them to see our our rigs and see how we're doing things and see the processes um, because we've been doing it for so long that we're so efficient and so good at it. But That's I right. welcome anybody to come over and just come talk to us and see what we're doing. I and mean, if we can shorten your learning curve and get you to be more successful even sooner, let's go. Everybody's going to be winning at that point. There's so much, man. I, I, I'm i willing to bet in your market, and I can definitely speak for mine, we're the biggest in our market. Um, but we haven't scratched it. You know, yeah. If, oh, yeah. We're, if we're more than 5% of the market, I'd be shocked. Um, and we're the biggest. So it, there's just no, there's so much room for competition that it really just doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just changing my mindset. I think networking is important. Communicating with, I, if you'd have asked me three years ago, I'd have said, oh no, JC's too close to me. That's, he's only about three and a half hours. I don't know. We might be moving in on each <laughs> other. <laughs> you know. What? And I would have said the same thing about Pat. Ah, Pat's only about five and a half hours. Ah. You know? So yeah. But now it's like, you know, we, we may end up in business together. You know, you never know. This right. mindset needs to change. And that that definitely shifted for me. I started doing those TikToks with uh, Pro Tip Tuesdays. And it's never on a Tuesday, right? It's like Pro Tip Tuesday, but it's a uh, Thursday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but that also opened my eyes because I started, I started getting some good feedback from uh, business owners across the country. And, and it was just, I don't know, it's been a shift. Yeah. And then once you start realizing how much impact you're having on others, 
you know, it's very rewarding for that too. Cause you're like, uh, originally we're both like that men's mindset of like me, me, me. That's all I care about. I don't want to help anybody else. But then when you see how good it is to actually help other people and see right. the good that you're doing within the community, it just feels amazing. You just want to keep giving and giving and giving. Mm -hmm. yep. and just let them know almost all the secrets, but not all, not all of them, but most of them. Yeah. You know, just block the super local people from you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, also on the flip side, though, like the networking outside the industry, outside the organizations, outside of your community, uh, because you just never know who they know. They never know what they can provide value for you or vice versa. You're the value you can provide them. Right. And it's just been so much fun traveling the last uh, really nine months and meeting everybody. It's like now before I was very close, tight knit, had to be the same people. And that's all I'd communicate. I'd go to these shows and I'd just stick to my little um a little group, if you will. And I just very introverted. So I didn't want to go talk to anybody else. But now when I go, I try and get out there. I try and shake hands. I try and introduce myself to everybody. Because again, it, they just, I never know who they might be or how much value I can provide to them. Right. And uh, it just keeps pushing me harder to, to want to get out there and network more. So here's the, here's the secret hack that I discovered about networking. Um, the more you share, the more willing other people are to share. Right. Mm -hmm. So you might, I might think I've got it all figured out until I get into a room with other business owners and I realize, Oh man, I, I'm only good at this thing. Yep. Right. Yep. And so I'm going to share as much about this thing as I can, because now, now I'm, I'm taking information from him, him, her, him, you know, and so it's really selfish. It's a hack. Uh, so, it, I mean, Share and network as much as possible in the early stages and just be humble and honest. Right. There's a there's a lot to be said about humility in, in the, a room full of people. And so this is uh, the way you misunderstood me or misinterpreted me when we first met. I guess I, I'm a confident person um, and I carry myself in a certain way. I, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, and most people mistake that for cockiness. That's not it at all. I've been humbled so many times in my life that I'm just grateful to be in the room, you know, uh, but you wouldn't know that unless you spent some time talking to me. So when you're networking with people, do not make assumptions. Do not assume to know that that guy is the guy I need to know, because that's probably not true. The guy you need to know is probably the guy in the back of the room that's not talking to anybody. Yep. Right. So just go out of your way the way you did. You approached me and said, hey, man, I don't know how to take you. <laughs> and that you know i was like okay what's that mean he's like well i, I kind of think you're an asshole you know? <laughs> he's like, okay all right well let's go from here right <laughs> but that's um that's how you have to do it you have to be upfront and honest and just uh be humble and i like it man yeah no, i'm glad we're friends yes absolutely one change it for the world and uh only regret is not doing it sooner but hey we're here today so all right. So talking about humbling and, um, you know, how do you stay motivated and continue to grow your, uh, wait, how do you, how do you stay motivated to continue growing and developing yourself? You know, cause for me, I get setbacks all the time. Like I'll, I'll be on like a high in life and, and business. And then all of a sudden it's just like crash, like hard. It could be the stupidest thing too. And it just brings me down. So like I have two options. It's like fight or flight. And some days it's just hard to keep pushing. It's like, why, why do I got to keep doing this? Why, you know, who am I doing this for? And I just got to keep digging deep and know my why's, my motivation, my kids, my family and the business, things like that. So what is it for you? Um, certainly my why's, right. That's the top. Um, developing a morning routine, which is something I've struggled with my entire life. I'm not naturally a morning person. I shouldn't even say that. So I, I'm speaking that into existence. Um, Hmm. This one's tough, buddy. This one's, this one could, we could spend an entire hour on just this one. So I've got a lot Give of me the cliff notes. The cliff notes. Yeah. Um, number one, you need to understand your why and you need mm -hmm. to look at it every single day, every single day. If you're not motivated and you're not doing the thing that you want to do, then um, you're going to burn out because this is hard. This stuff's hard. Um, number two, you need to celebrate the small wins. Yeah. For me, that's, that's probably the most important thing. So, um, I'm trying to think of a, an easy example of that. I mean, it could be as simple as, you know, man, today was really tough. I'm going to sit down at the end of the day and me and my wife are going to have a glass of wine and relax. Right? It could be as small as that. But in that moment, recognize 
what it is verbally, right? So draw attention to it. Hey, we did a, we did a thing today and we're going to celebrate it and um, we should be proud of it. That's those two things are really the thing. Oh, and downtime. I'm, I'm an introvert. We talked about that a while. You were a little bit surprised by that. Um, I'm a major introvert, so I need my own downtime. And if I don't build my downtime into my schedule, then um, I'm a nightmare. Mm. I'm a total nightmare. So those three things for me have really helped. Nice. Well, let's talk about your morning routine. What you got going on? Whew. You went straight to it, huh? I just said it was. <laughs> I, I, I just said I need to work on it. Oh man, um, I'm not part of the 4:30 club. I, uh, I I don't like exercising in the morning. I'm more of like a mid afternoon exerciser, so I'm building my my systems around that. I'm actually building a gym in our garage, which I'm pretty pumped about. Nice. Um, Let's see. So mornings, what my mornings look like. Usually 6.30 alarm clock, 7 o'clock, I actually get up, cup of coffee before I even talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm usually at the shop by 8. So in the mornings, it's been it's nice to kind of be with my family for a little bit and kind of see them gear up for the day and, you know, say our goodbyes. But um that's pretty much it. I'm usually at the office to see the guys off. I like to, I like to do that. Pat Clark calls it the power of touch. Mm -hmm. I like to do, uh, to let them know that I'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm, if they need anything, just be part of the process. Um, but operationally I'm pretty much removed from that, that side of the business, but just so they know that I'm around. Yeah. And then about nine o'clock, I'm usually on a conference call of some sort or with a coach or my CFO, um, kind of doing the structural stuff. And then by 11 or 12, I'm really, the day really becomes mine. So that's nice. it. Yeah. I showed up today at the office and uh, was able to make everybody pancakes and bacon. I haven't done it in a while and I felt removed from my, from doing it because I was doing it so often during the Christmas light season. So it was nice to get in there, see everybody in the morning and uh, just be able to be present and say hi to them. Yeah. Actually, you inspired me. I I did that a couple of times because of I saw one of your posts and I was like, man, that's that's pretty slick. Yeah. So I did it twice. Nice. <laughs> the first time was an epic failure. Uh, <laughs> you burn all the pancakes. <laughs> basically, basically. Yeah. They were they were all like, oh, man, this is so good, boss. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second time I was like, I'm just going to bring McDonald's biscuits. But uh, we're working on it. We're working hey, on it. Hey, you know what? It's just the little things that count. And I had somebody tell me one time that they would never make their team pancakes. They're like, I do enough for them. I would never do that. And I just, mm. I can't get that, wrap that around my brain. Like when your team is just working for you every single day, 40 hours a week, that you can't take 30 minutes, an hour out of your day to go provide and serve them. That's right. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're our number one customer and I'll do anything for my team. So I was excited to get up there. I mean, I was there at six, I don't know, 50 and uh, had the bacon cooking where they're, while they're walking in, they did their uh, safety training meeting and then I had pancakes and uh, bacon just ready for them. So nice. It's not yeah, us. I always tell them, I always tell my guys, none of this exists without you. That's right. And uh, it's true. Yeah. It's a hundred percent true. So for me, my morning routine, I like going to the gym first thing in the morning because once it's done, I have no excuse the rest of the day. If I don't do it in the morning and I try and do it at night, there's always an excuse. The gym's too busy. I'm tired. I'm hungry. The kids need something. So I, I, I'm not a morning person myself, but I made myself become one because I like getting that, that workout done. I feel just so much better every day I start with that five to six workout go home shower and then get the day started. So, but I get it. Yeah. Everybody has their different, different times. And uh, as long as you get it in, who cares? Right. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to get it down. I'm going to figure out my morning routine. It, I, I, I rely too much on emotion and feeling a lot of times, you know, um, but it's also served me very well in a lot of ways. So it's kind of a fine balance that I'm trying to figure out. Um, but my, my day is very crafted. I'm not, I'm not getting pulled in multiple directions anymore. I've, I've taken a, taken control of my life and, you know, I, I could sit on this podcast for the rest of the day and it wouldn't affect anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm only doing the things that, that I'm number one good at and uh, that I want to do. 
and um, the rest I'm delegating. And it seems to be working pretty well for me for now. I love it. I love <laughs> there it. will be, there's, there's ups and downs, right? There will be a, a time in, in business where, okay, I've got a grassroots and, and hustle until I get to the next level, right? There's always humps and stages, but right now I'm in a comfortable stage. I love it. And for the viewers that are listening, are you a morning person or do you like to be the afternoon? I mean, let's let, let, let us know what you're doing. Yeah. All right. So, um, I love this topic. And then I feel that some people I talk to aren't a fan of this topic, but you know, when I met your wife and, uh, you at uh, Vegas, Vegas. Yeah. Uh, you guys had, I mean, just, it looks like you're having so much fun and mm -hmm. I know there's always the ups and downs of, uh, working with the spouse as an entrepreneur, especially in the same companies or even having separate companies. And it's a hard balance for some to do. And you guys seem to have it down pretty good. Again, I'm sure there's, you know, those ups and downs every day. But what are some things that you have found to be effective to be able to maintain that balance between the work and personal life? And then how do you remove hmm. the work while you're home and just focus on each other? Oh, man. Um, I think I would start by saying my wife is a saint for putting up with me for, for as long as she has. I am a very <laughs> difficult A-type if you know disc assessments, I'm a DI, um, which she would she would tell you is short for D I C K. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I'm a stickler for the process, so I, I can be hard to handle. And she's almost the exact opposite. She's an ID, so she um, she's more people oriented and more um, feeling oriented, right? So she's like she's not going to follow the process if she doesn't have to, because it doesn't feel necessary. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to rewrite the process now to make sure you do it. Right. And so there's always been this clash. And so what's really helped us both honestly is disc assessments going through it together. It helped our team as well. Um, if you, if you're a husband and wife team, I highly recommend you go through the disc assessment. That's D I S C way too much to go into right now, but you should do that. At the very least, it helps us understand how we communicate with each mm -hmm. other and what makes us think the way we do. So that's helped a lot. Um, I think in, in business, we've been working together for, well, since 2007. Um, yeah, it's, it's been an up and down hill for sure. Um, we work really well together 75% of the time. That 25%. Um, it could be, it could get really ugly really quickly. Um, but I think how we've avoided the ugly stuff is we go, okay, you know what? I need a break. You need a break. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Or <laughs> whatever it is. Let's, we just need to stop and come back. Yeah. And then, then what we, we do is we focus on why we're doing it. You know, same thing. It's the same simple stuff. Focus on why you're doing what you're doing and make sure that you know that it's worth it. Right vision we talk about vision a lot where are we going to be in five years where are we going to be in 10 years it just grounds you and brings you back to reality and makes you realize okay you know it's not always going to be great but at least we know we're in a bad spot right now and it's going to get better right yeah. so i think that's helped us out a lot no i love that have you guys done the love language test yeah you know it's it's probably been a decade since we've seen the love languages um and we should probably look at that again yeah, because yeah. mine changed over time. And um, just like my disc assessment, I used to be a high DI, now I'm more of an ID. And, you know, we just change and adapt over the years, just like leaders. We're not the same leader we were yesterday. So uh, mm -hmm. I want to actually, I want to do that love language again. And it's also good to do it with your, with your team too, because, yeah. Oh. No, you keep going. Oh. Um, yeah, do it with the team too, because, you know, if you're just constantly giving people gifts and they don't want gifts, they just want, you know, words of affirmation coming for you just saying, Hey, thank you. You're doing a good job. Then we'll, we'll stop giving you gifts and we'll start talking about it. There you go. Yep. So I haven't even read it. It's brand new, nice and crisp, but uh, it's on my book list. I don't remember who it was that recommended that book, but yeah, same, same deal. So it's just geared towards businesses and I'm, I'm looking forward to reading that. Do you guys do like date nights weekly, monthly, or have a set like, this is going to be our time. We're going to, you know, take a break from the kids or spend time with the kids. Yeah. So we used to do a lot of date nights, um, at least once a week. And we're, 
well, scheduled date nights, right? Now it's more um, intentional date nights. So, but there, our schedules are so crazy. We're just in that season right now. We're running the real estate company as well as the holiday lighting and the pressure washing company. So it's just kind of insane right now. And I've been traveling nonstop. Um, so finding the time to do that is difficult and it's almost always last minute. We're really, truly blessed to have my parents and her parents, you know, less than a mile away. So we'll get home sometimes and we'll be like, we to go out and go eat. All right, we're going. And we just send them a text. Kids are on their way over. We're leaving. Um, so we're just intentional about our time. And even if we're at home and it's been a stressful week, well, like I said, we literally built a room. My wife calls it the parents room. Kids aren't allowed in there. You know, it's like media, TV, all this stuff. And so we'll, we're just intentional about our time. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's important. Uh, I don't know if you know Ryan Stuman and Amy Stuman with Apex, but they do date night every single week. There's like no excuse it's going to happen every single week, just the two of them. And they even said like sometimes we'll get a babysitter and we'll just go out back. Like they don't even leave the house, yeah. they just go outside back and they just have an hour to themselves. And, uh, you know, sometimes they're even home by seven o'clock at night. It's not about staying out late and uh, drinking and partying all night. It's just about no. spending that time together where you're intentional and, and that's all you're focused on. And you try and put work aside so you can focus on each other. Right. So that's that's the hardest part for us, M mostly me. But, you know, she's extremely passionate about the real estate, extremely passionate. And she's great at it. Um, my passion is in building and scaling the service based business, but I, I love them both. I love branding. As you can tell, I, I just like the brand. I like building concepts. Um, so for her, it's hard to turn the real estate off at the end of the day. For me, it's hard to turn business and branding and vision and 10 year picture off at the end of the day. So how do we do it? Um, we don't, <laughs> that's how, uh, no, it's, it's really difficult. Basically what we'll do is we'll both look at each other and say, okay, let's, let's get it out right? Let's get it out of our system. What are you thinking right now? And then we go, okay, we got to, we got to stop there. Right. And we just do our best to stay focused from that point on. But so who, who's the better realtor? Oh, for her, for her, for sure. A hundred percent. Sure. Yeah. She's the eye, right? You have to have ultra personal skills. Um, and I do, I have personal skills, but it's not, um, it's not a passion. It's a passion for her to interact with people as often as possible. She's extremely good at it. Love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, nice. All right. Um, and then real quick, I want to dive into, um, you know, you talked about building a better community together. Can you just briefly touch about that? Hmm. See, that's more your department. Um, that's the I in you, right? That's you're you're the one that wants to be out building the, the, um, I, I want to be the guy. Okay. We're going to get ultra personal here. So I'm, I'm writing a book. That's my plan. Um, nice. Love it. It's, it's a very difficult, I've got a long, hard, painful story. My wife could tell you that it's just been to get where we are today has been really difficult. Um, but God had a plan for me. God um, has scripted this is the best way I can, I can put it. So I feel it's important to get this down in on paper specifically for my children. Um, it'd be one thing to tell them my story. It'd be another for them to have it as a legacy and be able to read it. Um, so I feel called to do that. And God has put the, the perfect person in my life to help me execute on that. And it was just the timing. There's just no doubt in my mind that it was a God thing. Um, so I'm going to do that. But I say that all to lead to the fact that one of the, one of the legacies that I want to leave behind is I want people to say when I'm dead and gone that my life is better or I wouldn't be who I am today if I had not met Trevor Steele. Um, and I can't, I hope that's not for selfish reasons. Um, I don't know where it comes from or why I have it. I just know it's real. It's authentic. And I, I want that. Um, and I want to have that impact um, on people. So I think that the best way I can do that is behind the scenes. Um, I want to be the guy in the office that when you go see him, he helps you in some way, right? You're thinking about getting into business. You want to, I want people to think I should talk to Trevor. And then when they come talk to me, I help them. I set them off on the right path. Not because I was given this God given 
brilliant mindset. No, it's because I was beaten and torn and drugged through the dirt for 20 years. Right. And I, I know what not to do and I can save people a lot of time. Um, Angela, by the way, I'm reading that. Um, she was one of the reasons she, she definitely showed me a lot of support, um, when we were in Spartanburg and I really appreciated that, but, um, she's pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. You're, you're biased. You're biased, <laughs> but I, I think she is. I'm happy for you guys. I hope, I hope everything's works out great. Appreciate um, you. relationships are tough. I'm rooting for you. Um, but Hey, you know what? You two have a very similar mindset. Um, that growth mindset is powerful. If you yeah. can get, you could be a power couple. We, people call us a power couple all the time. We weren't always power couples. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was 15 years of, of torture until we got to the point where we were both on the same page and both mindset, growth mindset type people. So I'm all over the place right now. Bring me back home. What are no, we talking man, you're about? You got the book. You're, uh, you're, you know, your reason to be able to help people and say, uh, because of you, um, they were a better person. So yeah, no, I love it. And yeah, I mean, you got the podcast you got going on now too, behind the noise started that that's what you're doing every Friday. Once a week. Uh, okay. it's, it seems to be landing on Thursday. We've got one on Thursday. So my CFO, um, Justin Boyd, he's just incredible. I met him at the huge conference and, um, he's going to bring financial literacy to the table and uh, the importance of knowing your numbers. So excited about that one. He's awesome, just, br- he's just brilliant. One of those people that you, f- <laughs> if you feel inadequate, just within five minutes of listening to him talk, you're like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. I just, <laughs> I just need to, I just need you to tell me if the numbers are up or down or <laughs> are we in the green or the black? How are we looking? Yeah. Vitaly, what's up Vitaly? Yeah, I had a battalion on the other day. He keeps sending me these cold plunge things that he's doing. I'm gonna, I don't know if I can do it. I tried doing the fr- uh, the shower, and it's just, oh, my body just shuts down. You, you need to check out my uh, my attempt to add a cold plunge on TikTok. All right, I'll do that. It's not I'm good. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it once. Uh, All right, well, I appreciate it. I'm going to end this with one question, and uh, just a little, little bit more thought-provoking than a few prior for you but if you could instantly become an expert in any hobby or skill what would it be and why finances okay without a doubt um both personal and uh business and that's one of the reasons that no that's the main reason i hired the cfo um justin's helping me figure all that out and get to the point so uh, like i said i want to be part of the conversation right i want people to say Okay, I'm thinking about getting into business. I should talk to Trevor Steele. Um, it wouldn't have any grounding if I don't know how to structure a business financially. And I've learned so many different times the the pain behind not knowing your numbers um, that I'll never do that again. I promised myself I wouldn't. So that's what we're doing. I'm doubling down on knowing the numbers and the business side of it, KPIs daily. Mm-hmm. Not monthly. If you're if you're tracking your numbers monthly, it's too late. Yeah, you already missed a whole month. And if you know you're in the pressure washing business as well, if you miss April, well, oh, you weren't profitable in April. You're in trouble. So you yeah. need to do it That's daily. Month. April, May, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daily, weekly, and monthly metrics very important. For sure. So that's what I would be uh, if I could just snap a finger and be excellent at something. It would be that. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on here. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for everything you're doing. Really excited to hear more about this book. And I look forward to listening to your next podcast. It's been uh, fun and entertaining to see those. So congrats on executing on that. And do you have any parting words for everybody? Parting words? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Keep keep hustling. Don't. All right. Here you go. Here you go. So the, the one thing that I preach constantly intentionality and standards be intentional about everything you do even the outfit you put on right be intentional about everything you do raise your standards and everything around you will go up as well i love leave you with that i love it nice work nice work all right trevor thank you so much i look forward to uh getting down check out the new place and hanging out with the family in the near future and i will look forward to behind the noise this week through the noise. Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. We got Melody Edwards talking all the way from the Philippines. Let's get Edwards. it. 
I'm sure she's going to talk a little bit about VAs, but we're excited to hear from her tomorrow and make sure she's doing well. We will talk to you all soon. Take care. Thanks, brother. See you. Bye.